Welcome, welcome. Another cheapo, yes, cheapo time in the cheapo realm. Today in the hot seat, the VanLab VM200M. Follow you all, cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. shout out to VanLab. Hey, thanks so much for sending it in for the review. These people are nice. They're just so nice. Thanks. 200M is based on, yeah, the 830 clone. That 830 that's been around forever in the cheap realm. A classic unto its name. Hey, just about every vendor has used that 830. Uh, even Unity had one way back in the day. Um, you know, there's different variations on the theme. This is a 838C from Anning. But yeah, you get the picture. It is a common, common base. Is this one any different? What makes the Van Lab unique? Well, maybe nothing. Let's find out. Well, one of the nice things is this pretty decent looking box ships. So your little meter is going to arrive in one piece, all nice and protected. Came in a plastic wrap right here, which was really sweet. And uh, we have our standard cheapo test sleeves. Actually, you know what? These are not quite standard. This is probably above grade for a cheapo style leads. Um, yeah, definitely not your standard 830 cheap leads because those can be really uh, an abomination. But to overall, not so bad. Cat 3, 1,000 volts, uh, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, decent shroud. Yeah, it's not silicone, but you know what? Hey, it's a cheapo. Also, you get your VenLab Multimeter User Manual. They're calling it a user manual. I love that. VM200M. Pretty clean font, verbose. Has all of the features and specifications you want. Even a skew there to scan for more info, though uh, not a lot of features on this 830 clone. We'll soon find out. Meter itself uh, has a cheap feel to it. I gotta be honest here, this is really plasticky and you know, not a good plastic either. It has a boot that does come off. You know, at first it was on so tight, didn't even realize that it had a rubber boot, but it does have a boot that comes off and it looks a little weird without the boot, doesn't it? Seems like it's missing something, but uh, yeah, anyway. Um, kind of plasticky, not the greatest. We have that tilt stand here and you know, it's, it's okay. It does the job. Um, it doesn't flop around like some of them, so yeah, okay. Now, if you watch any of my videos, you know one thing I really love in a meter is a good solid selector. And I gotta say, here at least, old school, I can feel that ball and spring action happening. Nice clickety click, clacky clack, hits those ranges with authority. I like it. This week's shout out goes to Croatia. Buck, friends, thanks for watching. Display is only 2,000 counts. Let's turn it on. And I gotta say, it's a little weird looking. It's kind of a font. Um, you know, <laughs> let's put that backlight on. A little bit better. The backlight only stays on for about 30 seconds though. It does not stay on permanently. But um, a little bit of bleeding over at the top, but really nothing significant. I mean, hey, you know, all things considered. But I gotta say, font wise, yeah, I would have gone with something a little bit different. Let's check out the ranges starting off at the midnight or off position. Volts DC up to 600 volts. Resistance from 200 ohm to 2 mega ohm. Diode in continuity. Transistor test. DC amps only from 200 microamps to 10 amps. Finally, volts AC up to 600 volts. Top of the switch, we have two buttons, one for the hold and one for the backlight. And bottom of the meter, we have our high current input on the far left. In the middle, we have our common or ground. Finally, on the far right, we have our voltage, resistance, and milliamps. And over here, of course, is the HFE test. So yeah, pretty basic in terms of features and functionality. No NCV, uh, no live wire, nothing even in that area. But uh, hey, let's see how good it is, at least at the basics. Compared to that Anning 830 clone, um, you know, what do you prefer? Honestly, I prefer the smaller, bolder, just much more easier for me to look at font of the Anning. But hey, your mileage may vary. You might like this weird looking stuff. Start off with the DC voltage test. Um, I've got these amazing voltage references, precision references from 
Fred Chu. And guess what? Fred is being so kind. He's sending me some new uh, goodies for 2023. I'll have those coming up shortly. Uh, hey, if you're looking for a voltage reference or a current reference, hey man, check out his eBay link included in this video and all my videos. He's got some great gear. Okay, sitting at 5.01 amps. Want to see 5.0? So, not bad. Let's try the 10 volt. Should be looking at 10.00 and coming up as 10.03. Ah, it's in spec. And yeah, I just couldn't refuse 10.03 as well for the little anning. And looking at AC volts right now, coming in as 121 volts AC, a tad high. Now let's not forget this is not true RMS, so not exactly the most accurate, but hey, for home use, it's just fine. And I just couldn't resist trying out the Anning, and guess what? It's actually uh, more accurate than the Venlab, coming in as 120.1 to 3, fluttering a bit, but uh, definitely much closer. Quick look at resistance now, starting off Let's just try out the uh, default test leads. Do we have any resistance on those leads? Always good to find out before you do low resistance measurements. Here we go. And no, nice and clean. So that's what we want to see, especially when we're doing something like a 0.5 ohm resistor. Now, most cheapos have a tough time with this. Let's see if this one is any different. Coming in as 0.4 of an ohm, 0.3 of an ohm, so, you know, it's kind of in the ballpark, but definitely uh, anything but accurate. Next up here, I've got a 102.3 kilo ohm resistor. And a look at that, the good old BK Precision coming in as 102.4. Let's just see what we get here on the Ven Lab. And survey says come on Ben lab gotta give us something so for whatever reason it didn't like that direct input into the uh, inputs that resistor so I'm using uh, test leads instead and look at that 102.2 so not bad at all already continuity Default test leads, three to one. Oh, it's latched pretty loud. A little bit slow, but you know, considering default test lead. And here are the probe masters. A little bit better, still a little bit slow to latch as I lose focus, but that being said, not too shabby. Holy stomping, that's a pretty loud continuity. 81.4 decibels, maximum output in continuity. It's loud. Finally, we're gonna look at diodes and LEDs, light emitting diodes. Starting off with a standard diode. Oh, you know what? It always helps. No, we are in diode mode. What the heck is going on? Let's try that. Oh, I got the wrong test leads. Jesus. Okay, here we go. And forward voltage drop, looking good. For the red LED, it is lit with a forward voltage drop. And the yellow, same, the green. Oh yes, barely lit, but it is lit, but no forward voltage drop. The blue, no can do, and the white, yeah, ain't gonna happen. So three out of five in terms of illumination and uh, two out of five in terms of a voltage drop. Not bad. 2.2 volts, the output voltage in diode mode. We're going to high current right now, sitting at 6.5 amps, coming in as 6.7 on the Ven Lab. Let's see if we have a high current alarm when we surpass 10 amps. And we do! So we have a high current alarm, that's a good thing. And 10.2, coming up as just over 9.9 .9 on the GVDA power supply that's bringing it back down. So over 10 amps, nice high current alarm, always a good thing. Quick look at milliamps, here we are sitting at 5.38 milliamps. Um, coming in as 5.40, pretty darn sweet. I know that uh, milliamp uh, supply is looking a little weird, but uh, that's just the camera, so I do apologize to a whopping 
6.00 milliamps, 6.99 for the Venlab. So definitely in spec, beauty. To get in the battery compartment, yes, you're looking at it. Uh, no brass threaded insert. No, no, that sucks. Like, why do they do that? I know it's a cheapo, but in this day and age, we're seeing cheapos now, for the most part, coming with those brass threaded inserts. Instead, they're giving us this a drilled little hole. Ugh. All right, here we are on the inside. Now, as you can see, it definitely looks more like an 830 clone here, doesn't it? We've got that kind of little mini PCB going on. And this thing is tiny. Wow. Let's start off with those input jacks. We have the split variety type. Um, they're soldered in fairly decently, so not so bad in uh, solder land. Look at that. One, two tiny PTCs. Kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting to see those. But another nice surprise is on the milliamp side, we have a polyfuse. Yeah, that's right, a polyfuse. No having to replace a broken glass fuse. So polyfuse is always a really nice uh, idea, especially in cheapo land. What I don't like though is, yeah, take a good look. We are missing our current shunt. Instead, they've given us a current sensing resistor. Ah, oh, my God, 0 0.005 of an ohm. But um, yeah, honestly, I prefer a good old fashioned shunt. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. On the high current side as well, uh, glass fuse, little five by 30 over here. Um, 10 amp, 250 volt, yeah. Fab date, April 13th, 2022. Uh, indeed, this is a new main multimeter IC over here. Yeah, your standard copper chip on board. Looks like we've got a, a 48 pin in the old flipper Rooney. And here we go, rotary selector tracks. No dielectric on here to speak of. Uh, nice, clear. Uh, I don't know if it's gold plated or not, but looks awfully nice. Once again, look at that soldering job over here. Very, very well done. Here's the uh, transistor or the HFE inputs. Um, check out those rotary selector pads one two three four five in total and yes this is your standard spring mechanism here with the ball and spring old-fashioned but hey it works like a charm the top of the meter we have our standard zebra strip aka elastomar and of course our back light anyway there you go in a nutshell not so shabby after all hey it's cheap but you know what we've seen a lot worse right now this is going for i think under 12 dollars us on amazon.com uh hey at that price it's a no-brainer not a whole lot to not like about this other than the fact that that screen for me just looks a little weird it's a little bit too elongated and i'm just not happy with the font style they chose but hey you might like it at the end of the day, if you're looking for a cheapo with a little bit of pizzazz and something that doesn't look like your standard 830 rectangular clone, this might be the one for you. The Venlab VM220M gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. And also a big shout out to Eric in Texas. Congrats, you've got a new Sandwell multimeter coming your way. He was the grand prize winner and that multimeter giveaway. Oh yeah, congrats. Once Lots more cool things coming your way. This is gonna be a great year. Till the next one, keep on testing.